All right, well, I'd like to second um, what the previous speakers have said about what a great opportunity it is to come today and speak, and I really appreciate all of you coming out on uh, Sunday morning uh, to hear about this. And uh, like was just um, stated, I I'm so hoping to take a little bit more of a practical approach here to why do we do this, and I think they laid the groundwork very well in trying to describe what is it that we're doing and why. I'm going to try to integrate those two things because I think understanding how this is actually done practically speaking is really dependent on understanding why it is that we're doing this. Maybe. There we go. So for my talk today, uh, we're going to try to cover three things. Uh, we're going to try to identify the types of immunotherapy that are in use and in development for melanoma, kidney, and lung cancers. Uh, we're trying to review the rationale for these different kinds of immunotherapy and really discuss the practical aspects of these different types of treatments. So long and short is, here's the answer. So I can sit down now, but we'll go through it in more detail. So the three types of treatments that I'm going to talk about are vaccine therapies, which are predominantly given as injections into the skin, just like your flu shot. Cytokine therapies, which were alluded to a little bit earlier, which can be given uh, intravenously or by skin injection. Uh, and monoclonal antibody therapies, which are given as intravenous treatments. And again, understanding what these treatments do will really help you understand why it is we give them the way that we do. But I will just state, notice that these aren't oral treatments, okay? So if people come to clinic, they want to get a drug they can take at home, right? It's much more convenient to take your pill at home than to come and get your infusion. And again, we're going to discuss why that is. But long story short is that these are drugs that have biological properties. And so they predominantly are proteins or other sort of uh, molecules that are naturally in your body. So if you were to put them in your mouth, they'd be a lot like your lunch. They would be degraded going through your digestive tract, okay? So what are the mechanisms of action for immunotherapy? And this has been discussed so far, but I'm going to go through it a little bit further. Um, as we talked about, the tumor finds ways to hide inside your body. Um, they find ways to get the immune system to sort of stop attacking it. Um, and that's through that immunoediting approach that was just uh, alluded to, in which the tumor will grow, and parts of the tumors can be killed, stayed in equilibrium, and then start to grow. It can express factors that can sort of confuse the immune system into not recognizing that the tumor is not supposed to be there. And an example of that is PDL1, which you're going to hear a lot about today. There are also a number of factors in the tumor itself that are parts of your own body that are acting abnormally that actually tell the immune system to stop attacking the tumor. Um, and that goes to properties of uh, autoimmunity, where you don't want your immune system normally being too active, otherwise it can cause a lot of side effects. And all of you probably know people who have rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory bowel disease. And that's sort of the reverse of what we're trying to do here. Those people have too much immune system, and it has to do with some of these things being overactive. Um, so what we need to do with immunotherapy is try to overcome these and basically try to wake up the immune system. Um, and I just want to second that it's really important to understand that the drugs in immunotherapy are not specific, are not, the drug itself is not going after the cancer to try to kill it. These drugs are given to try to induce the patient's body to fight the cancer. So in the same way, the drugs we give predominantly aren't causing the side effects themselves. The immune system's response is what's causing the side effects. So the first of these we're going to talk about are vaccine therapies. So vaccines are biological preparations uh, that attempt to improve the immunity after getting an immune response to go after a very specific antigen. And antigens were discussed a little bit earlier. We'll go over them again. Most vaccines that you've heard about are prophylactic vaccines, meaning you get them before you get sick. And the idea is you educate the immune system so that when it gets exposed to something, you don't get sick. You already have an immune response. And the influenza is a good example of that. But in cancer, vaccines are actually slightly different. When we're giving cancer vaccines, patients already have cancer. And that's actually quite different from the prophylactic vaccines that give, get given for infections and need to be understood differently. Vaccines have specific parts. And this is really just for your knowledge base as much as anything. They have the antigen that we're trying to get the immune system to look at. They have something called an adjuvant, which is basically part of the preparation that sort of tries to stimulate the immune system to notice it. And they have a stabilizing agent often, which allows it to have a longer shelf life. This is sometimes more and less in uh, cancer vaccines. So the way this works in reality is that um, it, in some preparations is that you give these antigens, which can be any kind, so part of the tumor, part of a virus, part of a peptide, 
those dendritic cells get injected, in, when it gets injected into the body, the dendritic cells find it. They then go to the lymph nodes and tell the T cells who go after the tumor. And this picture is about, is a, is a schema of an attempt to try to take dendritic cells out of the patient, expose them in the lab, and then put them back into people, which is an approach that's in uh, use in prostate cancer now with a drug called Cipulucil T. So this, I thought, was sort of a funny uh, diagram I saw on the internet when I was uh, researching pictures for this. So this is the state of your immune system when you're not actively mounting an immune response to the tumor. And you can see that the cells that are supposed to be educating your, your cancer-fighting elements of your immune system are all confused. They're like, what's going on? Because this guy's all happy, and he's telling them, you know, chill out. The helper T cells, he says, oh, this is fine. Don't worry about it. And the guys that are supposed to be doing something about it, they're all hanging out, and they're not sure. But after inducing with a vaccine, these guys realize that this guy's not supposed to be here now. They go and tell these guys, and they can then go fight the tumor. So practical, how are vaccines given? So I said that the predominantly they're injected in the skin. And that's because you want, once they're injected, for the immune, the dendritic cells to notice them, take them up, to then go show the rest of the, can, the, rest of the immune system. They're injected as a depot because you want them to sit there and allow the other immune cells that notice them to get there and, and find them. If you injected them in the bloodstream, they'd go away very quickly. How often are they, are they given? Well, that varies somewhat depending on what the vaccine is, but generally speaking, it's on the order of two to four weeks. How long does it take to receive this? This can vary somewhat as well, but again, it's just a shot, so that, generally speaking, doesn't take too long. Often it needs to be prepared, so there is some time on the back end. It might need to be thawed. That might take an extra half hour or an hour, but generally speaking, these treatments are relatively quick. Do any medicines have to be taken before or after? Well, generally, no. Um, it's an injection, so sometimes that hurts a little bit, so you could take some Tylenol or uh, a compress around that area. And are there contraindications to getting medicines? Well, not, not particularly, uh, except that you want to make sure that you're not actually allergic to anything that they're going to inject you with, right? So they always ask you when you get your flu shot, are you allergic to eggs, et cetera. You would want to make sure you're not already allergic to what they're going to inject you with. And are there any drug interactions or medicines you shouldn't take along with it? And again, in general, no, but you know, we're trying to amount an immune response. So if you're on heavy doses of drugs that suppress the immune system, that doesn't really make sense. So you wouldn't really want to be taking those. And how many doses would you take, and how long do you need to take it? This varies quite a bit. Um, and um, in different settings, you may take it open-ended, but in a lot of cases, you may take a certain number of doses before they're going to try to attempt and see whether or not it's working. So the next form of immunotherapy we're going to discuss are cytokines. And I think for patients, this might be the uh, form of immunotherapy that's sort of the least practical in understanding. Cytokines are very small proteins that are important to the signaling, or in other words, the immune cells talking to each other, getting activated, and moving around in your body. They have multiple categories, and again, this is for your knowledge base, you don't have to memorize all this, but they can be called chemokines or interferons, interleukins, lymphokines, or tumor necrosis factor. This is a diagram of an inflammatory response, and you can see there's a lot of different kinds of cytokines. And they play various roles in the immune systems. All these ILs are interleukins. You can see down here, this is tumor necrosis factor and an interferon gamma. Again, you don't have to memorize it, but just to understand, there are a lot of different of these molecules that float around your body naturally. They interact with specific receptors on immune cells, and they tell the cell how to be active or not active. And one that's famous in the immunotherapy community is interleukin-2, which interacts with the IL-2 receptor and tells T cells to proliferate or to grow. So what are the mechanisms of immunotherapy here? How do cytokines work? Well, IL-2 gets secreted and taken up by other T cells, which causes them to get activate and proliferate and try to, we hope, go after cancer cells. Interferons, which were discussed a little bit earlier, are part of the natural response to viruses. And again, if you inject them, the idea is they agitate the uh, immune system to try to notice things and go after cancer. And this was a little uh, premature. You got got too big too fast. But the point is supposed to be you give these and it ramps up the immune response to go after the cancer. But it's somewhat nonspecific because these aren't specific to a, a certain kind of uh, cancer molecule. So how are these treatments given? Well, so these can be given as injections. So interferon is commonly given as a depot injection. But other, one, other treatments are given as intravenous therapies. So interleukin-2 is a treatment that's given IV and therefore given in the hospital. How often are they giving? Again, this varies on which one. It can be every couple of days if you're doing the skin injection. 
But if you're doing one of the IV therapies, this can actually require inpatient hospitalization. So patients who are undergoing melanoma therapy sometimes get uh, IL-2, and they have to be admitted to the hospital uh, for a week at a time. How long does it take to receive them? Again, obviously, if you're getting a shot, that's going to be a lot different than if you're getting an IV therapy, and it's specific to which kind of cytokine that you're getting. And are there any medications that you could take before or after? Again, not particularly. If you're getting an injection, again, it might hurt a little bit. If you're getting one of the cytokines sometimes, that's intravenous, sometimes the side effects can be severe, and a lot of medicines that can be given, but that'll be under the care of a doctor. Are there any contraindications for taking these? Well, not exactly, but cytokines can be very difficult on the normal system. So cytokines are very tightly regulated under normal conditions in your body. And if you give really high doses of them, that obviously puts things in flux in different ways than they're really supposed to be. And you have to be very careful, because they can induce a lot of different problems, heart problems or lung problems or psychiatric problems. And if you have any of these that are severe beforehand, cytokine treatment might not be the best for you. And are there any drug interactions or medicines I shouldn't take along with it? Again, not particularly, but again, I'm trying to activate the immune system, so don't take drugs that would uh, block the immune system. And how many doses and for how long? Well, that depends. For melanoma, if you take interferon treatment, that treatment is often given for a year if possible. Interleukin-2 therapy is usually given in the hospital for a week at a time, um, and that treatment's given every 12 hours, and a doctor sees how well the patient tolerates the treatment and whether or not it's working and whether or not to give more doses.